Comedian and actor Patton Oswalt believes that there is no cancel culture. Interesting. Did he not see what happened to Dave Chappelle over the last year? Just saying. I'm Jazz Borgonzo, and this is What's Next. Hey, what's up, everyone? Jazz Borgonzo here. Another episode of What's Next, Your Daily Dose. This is, of course, the weekend edition. Happy Sunday. Well, from what we've seen over the last year, year and a half, uh, when you've had a number of famous people, you know, uh, challenge the quote-unquote status quo, step outside the box, draw outside the lines, and of course, once they do that, once they challenge what we call now the wokeness, of course, the libs, the wokes, don't like it. They come after you. They try to boycott you, try to cancel you. And uh, of course, that's all they have is attack, attack, attack. And of course, all the crying, the panties bunching, the pearl clutching, and the re that goes on. But another comedian, Patton Oswalt, says, yeah, cancel culture. I'm not feeling it. Let's take a look. This comes out of IndieWire. Patton Oswalt, I don't think cancel culture is real. In an interview, the star of Lie, Love My Dad and the Sandman talked to IndieWire about his relationship to movies, comics, and the changing state of comedy. Patton Oswalt, who has several modes. There's the fallible, warts all comedian who has been performing on stage for decades, the comedic performer with dramatic chops known for everything from Ratatouille to young adult, and the comic book junkie who reads as much as he writes for them. You deal with cancel culture in your upcoming special. How much would you say that this impacts your decisions as a com comedian and actor? I don't think about it. I'm not saying that out of any kind of bravery or defiance. I just think I'll let it fly. And if I say something shitty or someone wins the argument with me, I'm effing sorry. You can apologize and you grow. I don't understand this thing, uh, this thinking about uh, you have to worry about the cancel culture, but I also don't understand the idea that you never apologize. Both of the viewpoints are ridiculous. What do you think uh, it means that uh, Louis C.K., who won a Grammy for his comedic special, and Dave Chappelle was nominated for an Emmy? Um, I don't think cancel culture is real for content. Interesting. It is weird how they're lumping in people who are committing actual crimes. They're getting arrested, and when no one wants to work with them, or people are like, oh, that's cancel culture. No, that dude did something horrible. That wasn't their material. They did something horrible. Are there lines that you won't cross in your comedy? If you're just doing performative cruelty for a cheap laugh, then yeah, anything can be offensive. But if you can find a way that it connects to something uh, cosmic or empathetic, then you can joke about anything. I talk about this in one of my specials. But there is a time, right, when I started, uh, when I had this really horrible stomach flu, but I was really determined to do the show. The crowd basically said, you suck. And I agree with them and walked off the stage. But those kind of moments just go towards making uh, you more confident and present on stage. It doesn't really stick with you, but you remember it fondly and laugh at it. Chappelle's always one who says that comics don't have to be funny as long as it's interesting and interested. I've seen hilarious comedians and you can see uh, they're not really into it anymore. You can sense that energy. The audience can sense it. When I go into clubs, I'm looking for something that amuses me. Uh, that's fun to do. Uh, not necessarily the biggest laughs. That's actually kind of easy. It's getting the laughter of disbelief that I want to get. What did you make of the moment when Chappelle got jumped on stage? What does it portend to comedians working today? I don't think um, someone at my level is going to get that, uh, going to get jumped at the uh, at the club. At his level, sure. There's a kind of madness in society out there that where people are becoming more and more unhinged because they're being told that this thing that you're looking directly at actually isn't happening. That leads to a lot of insanity. Uh, we texted last night. Uh, we texted, excuse me, that night. He says, yeah, it was crazy. I'm fine. He's got people around him. You have made some efforts to engage uh, with haters online, even donating to support a Trump supporter's medical bills after he trolled you. What compels you to do that? When you see people who have been pushed to such a place of hopelessness and unfeeling, just being uncared for their whole lives, they just want any kind of human contact, even if it's negative. It can lead to moments that way they wonder, uh, even if they're alive. A guy that who has been so sick and was just feeling like, look at the privileged guy whining about this stuff. Well, I'd be equally angry. You always have to look at what a person's situation and whether the anger is coming from ignorance 
actual cruelty, desperation, confusion, and fear. Um, as a comic book guy, what do you make of this way of kind of toxicity that pervades in fan culture? This happens with everything, including sports music. There are fans out there who unfortunately look at everything they love and showing the person how much they love them by hating other things. If I express hatred towards a thing uh, that's not them, that shows that how much I love them. It's a sad and ugly way to show how you love things. But unfortunately, that's how a lot of people are being taught and how people are being modeled by our leaders now, which sucks. And of course, he continues to go into, of course, uh, Sandman. Uh, Sandman is a sacred property for comic book people. I adore the, those books and I, do, I know you do too, but I'm practically terrified to check it out. How did you make peace with the stakes here? It's an adaptation. It's an adaptation. If you want to see what it's like to slavishly put a comic book on screen, go watch Zack Snyder's Watchmen. Now, Zack is really a talented filmmaker, but he literally recreated it frame by frame and it didn't work. I disagree. There are certain things that work in one medium that won't work in the way uh, work in the same way in another. If they had shot the best-selling novel Jaws the way the novel was, it would be an unwatchable effing movie. I disagree. I disagree with Patton Oswalt uh, for him to say that there is uh, cancel culture is not real. I think it's bullshit. And he knows this firsthand because his best friend, Dave Chappelle, went through this over the past year, year and a half. Everything from the closer where he spoke facts against the trannies all the way through now when he got jumped. And of course, most recently, when Chappelle got his, uh, his gig canceled from the legendary First Avenue um, Theater in Minnesota. So uh, you kind of scratch your head. Why would Oswald actually uh, you know, put his head in the sand in regarding this? Um, he's a huge comic book nut. He reads a lot. He writes for them. And yet, he sees it all the time. I'm sure he has seen over the last five years how wokeness has cancerified the comic book industry and its sales numbers are at its lowest peak in well over a decade. But um, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, you know, the whole Schultz, I know nothing. Seems like that's where Patton Oswalt is right now. And um, a guy who's been doing this as long as he has, yeah, it's ridiculous. And with that being said, I'm Jazz Bargonzo. This is What's Next. Want to see more just like this? Please leave a comment below. Like it, share it, subscribe to it. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.